So, you know, I started exploring all of these things, you know, the consciousness physics, and I was going deeper and deeper. And I started trying to think, okay, um, what is it that unifies this whole universe? What is it that, um, I wanted to understand my biology, but I thought there must be something that actually unifies something like a black hole and a galaxy in the way that a galaxy forms and the way that my own body forms. I just thought that makes kind of intuitive sense. So I started looking at the whole field of cosmology. And I don't know if you're familiar with cosmology, but it's a study um, that's really exciting at the moment. It's a science that's really exciting. It's actually looking at the universe as a whole and uh, how it works. Okay, so Big Bang Theory, everybody's probably heard of that. You know, that's an aspect of cosmology. Okay, so I started to look at Big Bang Theory and uh, all of the, you know, cosmological ideas, and in particular black holes, and study all of these things. And I want to just go and uh, run through of uh, what is usually said about, um, you know, in cosmology about Big Bang Theory and black holes, because I want to show you how it's actually completely the other way around, and it's actually all wrong. So, <laughs> so I'm sorry, and I've got the evidence, I've got some slides to show you later about the evidence about all that. So um, I, I think if you know the story of Big Bang Theory, it's, uh, and this is the story of the cosmos that we've been given so far, it's like everything started from a really little point, and then it exploded out, and it went through a period of rapid inflation, and uh, you know, it's actually called inflationary theory. And as it did that, it, went, it exploded really, really fast, and then it started to cool down, and get um, you know, more and more sort of particles started appearing, all the elements started to appear, and uh, you know, antimatter and matter started to appear, and for some reason matter started to um, you know, win out on antimatter and make it go, you know, that's the story that we're told. And then it, as it expanded more, you ended and cooled more, you ended up getting all the stars and the planets, and uh, you know, and then here we are, 15 billion years later, and now uh, we're sitting in Gateway's bookstore. So that's a sort of, you know, and that somehow in the middle of all that, life appeared, you know, and uh, so um, that's the sort of story that we've been given. And the story about black holes that we've been given, which I will go into, see, it's you know, not what we actually see in our telescopes, is that in the middle of all this, some of these stars started to get really, really to the end of their lives and uh, actually, you know, use up all their fuel and collapse in on themselves, okay? Has everybody heard that about black holes? So, um, you know, what you end up with is this um, area of infinite density and infinite gravity at the center where a star has collapsed in. And uh, so, you know, have you ever seen these science fiction films and everything where you get all these, uh, you know, uh, little explorers in a spaceship and they're going towards a black hole and they end up going, oh, well, you know, and they, they don't want to go as far as this sort of event horizon, you know, because that's the sort of boundary of a black hole. And uh, it goes into this event horizon, it gets sucked into this infinite gravity. That's the story, the story that we've been told, okay? And uh, that's a, the kind of picture of black holes that we've been given. And uh, it's remained like that for a long time. And uh, for a long time it's been, okay, um, that's okay, this is the story of the universe, this is the story of black holes, but it's okay, you know, we, um, we, we don't know that black holes really exist. Okay, what, what's happened recently is very interesting because from black holes being just a theoretical concept, they're actually, we're actually finding black holes all over the universe now. 